Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 for part 2 of your uh, weekly update. And in this update I'm going to talk about what's been going on down on Norvis while I've been up in, uh, up in, up in space poking at the energy science. So the first thing we're going to talk about here is, um, well we're running rather short on plastic. So Mike has built up a new plastic town uh, using sort of modern... Um, system so over here we've got as you can see it's all beaconed up nicely and the beacons are neatly placed so that the beacons on either side are getting the two chemical plants to either side of them and the uh, refineries above them and presumably this is all reasonably well balanced um i'm jokes about how balanced Mike is can get can uh, we don't need to worry about right now but the idea is that this means the point of this is that the these um these speed modules in the beacon here will bring these buildings up to running at a decent speed again so as you can see this is running at plus 75% plus 120% speed coming from that so if these weren't if these weren't being uh, speed the speed module as well these would be running very very slowly because each of these um productivity modules drops your speed down by 15% so these would be running at about half speed so we'd need twice as many of everything here and that would mean we'd need, uh, and, we, and then in order to get the same level of productivity, we need to have an extra uh, 12 um, productivity modules in those. But instead of having those, we've re we've replaced those 12 productivity modules uh, with eight speed modules, and that is a, a massive saving. Partly because it's fewer modules, but also because speed modules are cheaper than productivity modules. So this is what I've been getting at in the past when I've said talked about um, why it's worth doing this sort of speed module th system, um, because modules are very expensive. At least the higher tier modules are very expensive. Instead of instead of using um, because you could get more instead of speed modules, you can just compensate by putting in more and more and more and more and more and more machines. Now sometimes that can get a little bit silly, but uh, in th this this sort of level where you're only needing to double or triple the amount of speed you're getting out of them, you you could do it with extra machines. But you'd require so many extra uh, productivity modules that it that it stops being worth it. Now the downside of this is that these things do use a huge amount of power. As you can see at the bottom there, we're using five times the amount of power one of these machines would normally use. But given how easy it is to get large quantities of power in space exploration and Crastorio. I'm not too worried about that. I think we're absolutely fine with this. So yes, what's going on here? Well, we are, we are making plastic. So the reason we're doing this is because over here we had we had big oil that was producing lots and lots of plastic beforehand. And over here you can see we've got loads and loads of machines making the petroleum gas. And these ones, because they're not beaconed, have got two productivities and a speed in there. And that means we're not getting as much uh, petroleum gas out for the amount of oil we put in because there's fewer productivity modules. And they're probably not running as fast because the speed modules might not be able to keep up with it. Um, yes, in fact, that's bringing it up to normal speed rather than slightly, rather than almost double. So, but the, the main reason we've moved away from this is because this just wasn't producing enough pa enough plastic. So we've got we've got a decent amount of it passing, being passed out along here, going into the station. But the system over here can produce it much much more quickly and and efficiently, and it's a bit more dedicated to that. So. It's, it's a bit like the sort of the bus systems. Over over here on the bus, we had originally we'll have had things like green circuits and red circuits being made on the bus, and then we've moved them off to their own separate build areas when we decided that actually this is running too slowly. We need we need to have much larger quantities of these things, so we'll move the production off. And the same with smelting. We started off with smelting being on the bus, and we thought actually, and then till we actually need to expand beyond that, and we needed a lot more throughput, so we started to move that move that off as well. This is the same sort of thing. We had our um, our oil processing bus here that's producing all of the things you can make from oil, but it wasn't doing it fast enough, so now we've moved over to here to make the plastic specifically in its own separate area, because that's the one that's in the highest demand. Other stuff that's in lower demand, like sulfur and rocket fuel and sulfuric acid, where this is still able to keep up, fine, we'll leave that being done over here, that's not a problem. But the ones that are, that, that are struggling, you, we might as well move off. <clears throat> Now it does occur to me that the problem with this is, as you can see by this train coming in here, we're prior the priority priority is going to be to get the plastic from here rather than rather than over here, because this station is closer to pretty much everything that will require plastic. Not the LDS, but pretty much everything else that requires plastic is going to be closer to here. So we should potentially maybe cut this off and stop making plastic here, or maybe we should have some sort of cunning prioritisation system so that trains go to here when they want plastic instead of here. One way or the other, this this is not ideal because we're going to be using the plastic from here before the plastic from here, and this one is being produced more with with more productivity modules, and therefore it's a more efficient system for doing it. So we don't. So ideally, we'd rather much rather have it come from here than here. Because it's the same here. We've got the two productivity modules, one speed module. So we're getting a plus twelve percent from each step over there. We're getting plus eighteen percent from each step over here, which it's not a huge difference. 
but it does add up over time and as we start to use better and better productivity modules if we ever do in these in the in these systems it's going to become more and more of a thing and more and more of a uh, more and more of a reason to move over to here also mike has tried to decorate these nicely but only to find that we don't have uh, refined concrete or refined hazard concrete as things that are available on the uh, on the logistics network or even on the bus because i don't think we've made them for anything yet so he, so he's tried to decorate but it hasn't worked very well because nobody's made those things <laughs> Right, other things. So Mike also built us a new a new stone mine over here because this one, as you can see, is basically dead. There's a, there's a trickle of stone coming out, but it's not very much. We need stone a little bit faster than this. So now we've got this one over here that is not. I was, was going to say it's completely full. It's not full. It's flowing flowing quite a bit through though, and, and filling the station up nicely over here. We've got yeah, we've got twenty five thousand in each of these uh, in each of these warehouses. They're ba they're very very nearly full. And then another one here, which is actually full. Um, so that's we're probably going to be end up using this one up first because, again, because it's closer. We don't have LTN to do the nice round robin thing, and then we'll move on to using up this one. And so when that one runs out, we'll presumably need to go off and find another another stone mine. But you know that's um, that's how these things go. Maybe at some point we'll get get to the stage where we're producing enough stone from our core fragment processing over here. But I kind of doubt it the way things are going at the moment. The better alternative will be for us to go off to a um, a stone planet like uh, where is it? Like this one here, and 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 Androgun, Androgen. Um, it has biter meteors for some reason, which is odd because it's not. Oh, it has some vitamin land on it. That's why. Uh, so we could potentially come out here and uh, start digging up stone from from this one and producing massive, massive quantities of it that we could ship back. But I think that's the sort of thing that normally you want to wait till you get spaceships to do that because it's a bit of a faff otherwise. So yes, he's digging up. He's built built a new stone mine. Um, he also built up a uh, copper mine somewhere. I think it was somewhere up up here in the north. Uh, probably this one up here. Um, however, due to due to spectacular fail, he set up a copper mine that thought it was a coal mine because he forgot to rename this station here. So um, that was all fun and games until we realised that everything that was requesting copper, uh, copper ore specifically, was just starting to fill up with coal. No, everything that was requesting coal was filling up with copper ore. So down here somewhere there is a there's a system that's making the um, uh, make, making the refined fuel. Uh, a train turned up here full of copper ore. It went into here sad times were had and, and much clear cleaning up was required so <laughs> well done there um it was kind of funny though i guess speaking of mining uh, mark says he's opened a new uranium mine where's that that looks like it's here so we've wow that shrunk a lot already i mean you can you can tell how far you've got through a mine by looking at how big the, the area covered by the drills is compared to how big the area covered by the ore is and then also by looking at how many of the belts are actually still outputting anything so yes this was uh, obviously a fair sized chunk but it's all just gone um, basically into here and then been slurped up and presumably taken over here to the uh, uranium processing facility so you can see the um, the the, the uh, centrifuges up here they're actually running again now so that's producing us a little bit of iron and oh and a bit of uranium as a byproduct as well so we can store that uranium in these um in, in the in these warehouses we've got a little bit here we've got like we've got about almost 200 which is enough to kick off some covarex so that's going to be something that will need to be done fairly soon and then over here we've got like 20,000 or something um uh, of, the, of the of the dull uranium so yes we're definitely going to need to get some covarex up and running here what i imagine we'll probably do is have a covarex system in this gap here or possibly in this gap over here keep it all all localized in the same area and then just turn the um and, and then turn some of the uh, dull uranium that comes out of here into into hot uranium and or spicy uranium and feed it over here into, into this system. Um, it, to be honest, it doesn't really matter exactly how we do it. Oh, there's, there's there's a spicy uranium coming out. It doesn't really matter exactly how we do it, but I think it makes sense to have it in this area because there's no point in shipping it out to somewhere else just to ship out dull uranium to ship out spicy uranium. We might as well do it all here. Um, let's let's just check the Covarex recipe. Um, uh, because I wouldn't trust this to not have some sort of weird alternative to the Covarex recipe. So, that's fuel cells. Uh, oh, Covarex actually spits out stone as well. So, it'd be even better to put it here because there's already a stone place to, to dump it into. <laughs> and the numbers are different as well. It's 3 and 30 gives out 31 instead of 4 and 40 gives out... And the other one, the original Covarex, gave back some of your dull uranium as well. So, it's, it's cheaper on the... Um, you don't need as much to kickstart it, but it's going to rip through your, uh, your your 238 a lot faster. But it does give you some stone in return, so um, thanks, I guess. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, I know we need stone, but this seems to be an expensive way of creating it. Oh, and here comes some more uranium. So, yes, Covarex is different because, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? Mark has also put in a copper prioritization system, which is... Um, 
I think it was quite that, that was quite interesting. Oh yes, I remember what it was. So yes, down here we have we basically we have two inputs of copper and and one output. So we've got the input that's being brought where it's been brought in from the mines by train, great, and then we've got another input where it's coming in over here from the uh, from the core fragment processing. And this stuff is unlimited. It just comes through a certain amount per second, two thousand per minute or whatever it was it turned out to be. Uh, so that just churns through along here and it's constantly so you want to, you want to keep using this up because it's it's unlimited you just want to make sure you you get through it all and you're never limiting limiting that uh, this one every so often you'll have to go out and dig up a new mine when you run out of it um, so you need to you want to limit the amount of this you're using up because it's it's it, it's 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 higher priority it's it's uh, sorry it's a uh, it's it's more more expensive isn't quite the right word uh, it's expensive in effort that's that there we go that'll that'll do so at the moment it, it, it's all just flowing through because we're using up lots and lots of copper. You can see the amounts coming out here. That's never going to keep, be kept up with by the, the amounts going in over here. But what um, what Mark has done, uh, let me see if I can find where he's done it. Oh yes, down here, he's, he's monitoring how much copper is in this warehouse, and that's this is the output warehouse basically. So when when this is down at basically zero as it is at the moment, what's oscillating around 100, uh, that means it's still trying to fill up these these warehouses down here. Eventually, these warehouses, I mean, they're fairly full at the moment. It's not doing badly. But eventually, these warehouses will fill up a bit more. When these are fill up, it'll back up into this one. This will gradually fill up, and it'll pass the signal down over here. These belts are watching for that signal of copper to go above a thousand. And when it goes above a thousand, or rather, actually, technically, they're watching for it to be less than a thousand, and then they're passing stuff through. So, when this goes above a thousand, then these belts will all be cut off, which will stop the ore flowing through from down here meaning that we'll only be using the ore that's coming in from over here. So that should ensure that we've always got room in the output to, to use it up until at least we've produced 500 stacks of, um, of, uh, of, of copper over here. Um, and if we're using it that slowly, then yeah, okay, it's probably time to stop letting that back up and turning it into landfill over here. But I think that'll probably never happen. So this just means if we have a bit of a lull in the amount of copper we're getting through, then we'll stop using it from here, and we'll just we'll just concentrate on using it from over here, which which makes a lot of sense, and it'll keep it'll keep the amount that's coming through down a bit to the point where we can yeah where we can handle it. Um, and I think because of, he's done it like this because of the way this is a bit spread out. These are being fed into the uh, into the copper supply that's going up into this part of the refinery, which is quite a long way over from what's going on over here so it wouldn't really make sense to shove it all into a warehouse and prioritize that way instead we've got the warehouse over here and we're doing we're doing the prioritization in a slightly different way but yeah that's um i think that's that's good it makes it makes sense and it should just work so that's most of the big projects that have been done. Mark did also um, finish off up here with uh, finishing off the railway systems that allowed this uh, copper mine to be put in. He's put in a few more walls here and there, like I think this one's new. Um, I don't think that one's new. And he put in the one down here. Um, this one looks kind of scribbled because of the way the land goes. Um, this one down here because I, I pointed out in the last video. There's also been quite a lot of sort of going around just fixing up little things. So I, I built quite a to-do list after the uh, last video because I spotted lots and lots of things that were broken because I was looking at the base in a slightly different way. <laughs> there's quite a lot of... Yeah, there's a lot of railway lines running around over here. There. What's, what's, what is that train doing? Oh, it's a core mine train. Okay. It's probably going oh, going to this core mine outpost here. So, there's yes, there's been some putting in of new core mines down here, I think. Um, there's been some fixing up of the little, little things, like uh, not having any uh, heat shield tiles being fed through to rocket production over here. We've sorted out this system, which is was pulling all of the biomatter out of the chests of shame. Um, but for some reason, the chest was uh, the, the the belt was coming out of here and going into in, around into here, rather than going from the uh, from the warehouses and passing it back into here. So that's been sorted out and tidied up a little bit. So that's good. Uh, there's been some mines. Old mines have been removed. I can't really show you that apart from saying, look, there is nothing here. It's been moved. <laughs> there's a belt here though for some reason. Uh, that's a weird. That's that's a weird belt. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, <laughs> oh, it's because there was probably a yeah, there'll have been a mine here, and so this was the belt that was going out, taking the filters out to the mine, and now it's just not doing anything. It's just sort of passing them around, around, around in circles forever. So that should probably be removed as well. <laughs> Tristan says he's made a display for how much of various the various resources we have. I don't know where that would be. <laughs> um. What are you? Ah, here we go. Right, so this is monitoring all of the different... Um it was monitoring what's available on in in all of the stations around the around the factory down here on Norvis and telling us what what we've got, how much of. Um, so presumably, along here, we've, how, how, how does how how does this work? Oh, I see. 
So it's feet yet right. So if C is greater than yeah, so all of these are set if if C is greater than zero on or C is greater than N on their um on their thing, then use the colour of the thing next to them. And then they're passing up C values from all of these. Okay, so so I, I see how this works. So this is this is reading in the value from the um, from the from the uh, train system, and it's saying divided by ten thousand, output that many as C's. So this shows how many how many ten thousands of um, of iron plates we have. So we're passing the C up here. This is this is an iron plate. Oh, that's just there, so we can. That's that that's not even connected to anything. That's just there to show. Just so when you when you glance at it, you can tell what this is measuring. So we've then got along here. We've got uh, if C is greater than zero, greater than one, greater than two, and so on up here. So if, for every ten thousand iron plates, one of these lights will turn on. So you can see we've got if we look up here, we've got more than we've got about nineteen thousand iron plates, nineteen thousand copper plates. So that's going that's going well. Um, However, we are very, very short of iron ore and copper ore in the stations. We've got plenty of iron ingots. We've got plenty of... Uh, what are, you, are you copper ingots? Yes, you are. We've got no copper ingots. Uh, got a decent chunk of steel ingots. That's, that's good as well. And so we can, the idea is we can just look along here and see what we're short of. We're very, very short of lithium, interestingly. So you see, this, this allows me to go and, go and see, oh, we're very short of that. Oh, we've got a bit of a shortage of steel. So we can, we can come over and look at these and get an idea of what, what things we have a bit of a problem with. Over here, pyroflux. What's he dividing? He's dividing the fluids by 10,000 as well. Okay. So we've got a bit of a shortage of pyroflux, but it's not too serious. All of the other resources seem to be fine, although there's slightly less lube than the others. But sure, that's the, there's lots of it. And I think the, the the green and the reds are probably set at quite sensible levels here. So we can we, we go along here and we look at the look. We can look at all the stats and we go if it's in the green, it's probably okay. I mean, we've got a decent amount of plastic, as you saw. We think I think we're okay there. We don't have enough silicon. We don't have enough steel plates. We don't have enough copper ingots because we're not making any of those. And we are, yeah, as I say, we're completely out of lithium and the and the ores. So let's go and have a quick look at lithium and see if that's see where the problem is with that. And because uh, lithium is being made over here. Okay, now we have several tens of thousands of lithium, but it's either not being fed onto the network or not being picked up properly at the other end. But it doesn't seem to be being. Oh no, it is being made. It's just being made quite slowly, but that quite slowly appears to be enough to keep up with the, what the system requires. So we're probably okay with that. So this lithium is not something. Something's not hooked up properly for the lithium here. Maybe it's maybe it's not reporting the sort of the twenty odd thousand lithium onto the. Uh, no, it must be more than that. Um, this, it's, yeah, it's not the, the lithium isn't getting reported onto the network properly. So that's that's the problem. <clears throat> but it looked like it was. So let's see. Over here we have these warehouses. Green cable. Green cable. Yep, green cable goes to here. No, the green cable doesn't go to the warehouses, it only goes to the pylons. Uh, so that's kind of nonsense. So if, if I come along and I put in green cables like this, uh, like this, and then hook it up to that, or, and hook it up to that as well, then we should see on here should see. yes there we go 52,000 lithium so now if we go back over to map view and then back over to the, uh, the thing over here we should now see that if we find the lithium yes there we go we've now got all the way up to the top of the red in lithium so lithium is okay there's not enormous quantities of it but it's basically okay <laughs> so yeah that's um, fairly fairly straightforward now the nice thing about this is um, that it's it's sort of designed in a in an easy, easily copy and pasteable way. So you, if I if I wanted to add more of this in, it would just be a case of making a copy of a chunk of this and putting it in again. All of the wiring will be put in and everything will be set up correctly. I'd only have to go in and then program the divider here and the um, and and put in a thing here to, as an indicator to tell you what's being shown displayed there. Um, which is quite nice, and that probably made it a lot easier to build because I imagine that Tristan probably came in and just made. A small chunk of this down here so it'll program this one and copy it all the way across here then it'll copy that all the way up and well up or copied it all the way up here and program yeah so, so you only had to program basically one stack of them and then the whole lot with the rest of it could just be copied across and even each, each individual stack would have been a relatively straightforward configuration because it's going to be um, just changing the number there a little bit so yeah fairly fairly simple fairly straightforward to set up but it gives us a nice in a nice display of what we're short of what we've got so that's quite that's quite nice Ah oh, yes, and because we're very short of um, copper, but have lots of iron, or at least comparatively, uh, he's also set the um, the filter cleaning recipe over here to do the coppery based one. So all of these machines, you have a choice. You can either have them uh, clean up water in, in a way that produces uh, a bit of iron ore, a bit of copper ore, or a bit of raw rare metal. 
or also also apparently um oh no these are these are separate these are clean again iron beads um so we switched over from the iron one to the copper one because we're using up copper more and that is clearly having a 10 percent chance of producing copper each time we clean 100 dirty water is clearly going to uh, solve all of our um, all of our copper supply problems <laughs> obviously it's not but you know every little bit helps i suppose so might as well he set up the building of quarry drills on the bus somewhere. Um, I, 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 don't know. I don't know where. I'm not going to go looking for those. But those are the things you use to drill up Immersite out of the ground. So that's that's nice. Expanded priority train waiting area. Uh, well, there's lots of train priority waiting areas. I think it's probably... Is it this one? Might be this one. Uh, oh, yeah. Up here. Oh, so this is just general. Any any train can go to, to here when it's waiting for pickup. Fair enough. So that, that's apparently expanded that a little bit. Mike spent some time designing up a fully beaconed and moduled system to um, produce, to do basically to do this, but for copper. So eventually we'll have copper ingots available. Um, he was apparently it's a bit of a horrible tangle, but I think he's, he might be going to build that next time. We shall see. But at the moment, because we don't have enormous amounts of pyroflux, we don't really want to start using too much of it up for for making copper. It would help a lot because it would improve our productivity with it. Um, we get quite a lot more copper out for the copper ore we're putting in, which would really help given we've got a shortage of it. But since we absolutely need um, iron ingots up in space, and steel ingots are kind of useful for shipping steel to space, we've we're prioritizing the iron side because the, uh, the 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 copper one we can kind of compensate for with more mines. We can't do that with um we can't do that with the with the uh, uh, with the iron because we actually need the ingots. He's also put beacons onto the logistics network and he's challenged me to try and find where. Um, does that mean he's done something weird and horrible? I don't know. I'll have a I'll have a quick look just to sort of to uh, to humour him and see if I can find it. Ah, here we go. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. I was worried I was going to have to install the Beast Finder mod and uh, use that to search for it. But no, it's been, it's been put in here um, above all of the, sort of the logistics and chests and stuff and all, all the furnaces and the smelters. So again, this is presumably one of those. Well, most of the stuff I need is kind of sort of roughly in this area, mostly. So let's put it in here because it's got most of the ingredients I need. And I can't criticise that too much because that's kind of what I've done in space with my manufacturers for making all of the, um, all of the big stuff out there. Although, that is slightly neater and a bit less spaghetti than this area. Although, although, I think quite a lot of the um, responsibility for the spaghetti in this area is, is uh, goes to me because, um, well, firstly, I built the bus all the way along here and didn't leave very much space for expanding things. And secondly, I think I actually did build in some of the spaghetti around here. So, yes, definitely my fault. So yes, that's the uh, that's the end of the um, the smaller smaller projects because there's there's always little things that need fixing up around the base. So I think that's but that's those those are the ones that are at least worth talking about and are interesting. So yeah, as I was saying yesterday, next time we're going to be heading out to. Um uh, Tristan's going to be carrying on out on Njord trying to produce the um, Holmium to, to allow me to get the energy science running I'm going to be fixing all the problems I found in the energy science and then going off looking for beryllium uh, maybe one of Mike or Mark will go off to look for iridium because we're going to need material science at some point as well so uh, that would be that would be a useful thing to have it's not a it's not too high a priority but it would be but it will be will be useful in the not too distant future so there's always lots and lots to be getting on with. As I said earlier, we also going to need Covarex because I'm getting starting to get through quite a lot of uranium up in space where I'm making doing the uh, doing the energy sciences. There's always lots to do, so please come along and join us on uh, mon Monday evening at 7:30 when we shall be streaming our um, our our attempts to uh, to continue with this and see what we can get done next. I shall also be streaming on Wednesday when I should be playing Dyson Sphere program, so there's lo always lots to do in there, and um, there's other videos coming out as well. So I I'm doing reasonably well with Tuesday videos, I think they're coming out roughly every other week at the moment. If you're a supporter, you get to see them a week early. Uh, GTA videos are coming out most Thursdays at the moment, and yeah, there's there's always there's always lots going on on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed and. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye.